Well, most people complain when their elected government representatives don't fulfill their election promises. But lawyer Roger Cox, along with 900 other Dutch citizens, went a step further. They sued their government in order to force them to increase their climate change targets. And with that, we welcome Roger Cox. He's also written a book on this subject. It is called Revolution Justified. Hi, welcome to Toronto, to Canada. Nice Thank you. Yeah. Um, take me back. So let's go back to 2013. You sue the uh, government of the Netherlands, along with 900 other uh, citizens of your country, uh, and, and on behalf of the Dutch NGO, Urgenda. Why did you do that? Well, uh, on an international stage in 2010, in the Cancun Agreements, uh, all nation states agreed that a two degree warming of the earth, of the average temperature of the earth, uh, will constitute a danger for humanity and for the ecosystems that uh, humanity depends on. And uh, also it was then acknowledged what uh, uh, developed countries should do by 2020 in order to contribute to, uh, to achieving that, uh, that goal. And that is a reduction percentage of 25 to 40 percent in 2020 of greenhouse gas levels uh, relative to 1990 levels. So there's broad agreement on that. And uh, since the Dutch government is not setting a target of at least 25% reductions, we started suing them uh, on behalf of uh, violating the state's uh, duty of care. So but basically, they, the Dutch governments agreed to these international benchmarks that many governments, Western governments, developing country governments signed on to, including our own. Including Canada. OK. Yes. And so, you, so the Netherlands then sets its own targets, which they say they will reach, but they don't match the targets that are set out in these international agreements. And so you say, we're taking you to court. Exactly. Why take them to court? Well, I, what you see is that uh, we've had a, uh, a UN climate treaty now uh, since 1992. So we're 23 years down the road. And uh, the problem has only gotten worse. Uh, politics is not able to, to tackle the issue uh, forthwith and, and with enough urgency. Uh, it has much to do, I think, with the fact that uh, politics and, uh, and also uh, uh, business is, is very short-term based, and this is a long-term problem, so it's very hard for, uh, for politics to, uh, to address the issue. And also, it's a very complex problem that's uh, not properly addressed in the media often, I think. Uh, while in a courtroom, there is, uh, if, you, if you would like, peace and quiet, the, the facts <laughs> uh, speak for themselves. Mm. Uh, so we thought uh, it would be best to test the science and test these, uh, the value of the two-degree target and these reduction targets in court so we could have a, uh, a knowledgeable discussion on the topic uh, b before the court. Okay, yeah. here we are having a peaceful and quiet discussion ourselves about this. I have to say, it sounds all rational and reasonable what you say, but it, 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 it's sort of a crazy idea in that no one else has done this. We have tried to address these issues through politics, through partisanship, uh, through various NGOs, through intergovernmental discussions, and yet no one has taken them to the court. What we, how did this come to be? Did you just think, you know what, I'm going to sue these guys? Yeah, and that's what I noticed also. And if you understand the climate problem and understand the gravity of it, then uh, it would be very strange if, we, if we're like 30 or 40 years down the road and we look back at uh, this point in time and then uh, have to conclude altogether that no, nobody uh, picked up the idea to sue their governments before court. So we're looking only to the legislator and the executive uh, branch for solving this problem, while in a democracy based on the, on the, 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 the rule of the law, there's all, also a third power, uh, which is the judiciary. So why not involve them and see what they have to say about it? Let's that's talk that's about basically the idea. Okay, so what did they say? What happened in court? What happened in court is that uh, um, the court did agree uh, with us and uh, uh, ruled that the current climate policies in the Netherlands are inadequate and in fact unlawful. And the court labeled, labeled the current climate policies as, uh, um, as dangerous uh, neg negligence and as a violation of the state's duty of care against its uh, citizens. And then upheld that they have to hit certain other targets. Yes, and they, uh, they ordered, the, court, they ordered uh, the state to curb their emissions by uh, at least 25 percent by 2020 uh, and said that that is the absolute minimum that a developed state uh, should, uh, uh, should aim for for 2020. Okay. If As you said, you know, you go and you say, let's try this in court. Let's try this other branch. It hasn't been tested before. I'm guessing as a lawyer that you think, eh, maybe I can win this, maybe I can't, let's see where we can go. When you hear the verdict like, of this, are you, are you surprised? Are you shocked? 
Uh, yes and no. Uh, no, because we thought that uh, we, we did have a very valid, solid uh, legal case. So from a legal perspective, I thought we, we should have won the case, and, and luckily we did. Uh, but you also have to take into account that uh, you have to see whether, whether judges are really uh, putting an effort into it to, uh, to read all the documents that, that you produce. Uh, and also, uh, you have to see whether judges are courageous enough to, uh, to, to render a verdict like this, knowing that you will have some sort of political backlash, although I must say that most political parties in the Netherlands welcomed this verdict, and so Parliament has also requested uh, our government to comply with the verdict, and, uh, and the government will do that. Okay, yeah. so when this um, verdict comes out, it's in what, what level of court in, in the Netherlands? It's a court of first uh, instance. Okay, so the Dutch yeah. government is appealing this verdict. The, the, the Dutch uh, government will appeal on principal legal grounds, uh, but at the same time has also confirmed to Parliament that they will comply with the verdict. What does that mean? Uh, that uh, the, the reduction targets of uh, the Netherlands will be raised to 25% in 2020, and no matter, notwithstanding the appeal, they will comply with that, so they will implement this as the new target for, uh, for the Netherlands and will uh, uh, start uh, creating uh, instruments of, for achieving uh, this target. But at the same time, they want to have certain legal questions raised in court and they want to have an answer on that because they think this is very precedent setting mm. and don't want this precedent to spill over to, to other uh, files and dossiers like uh, healthcare or uh, education. Or so they don't like want that. the courts to determine all their policies and politics. Is exactly, it? but uh, fact is, I, I don't think that any government would need to worry about that uh, because climate change is really a, a very specific case that uh, that in its own ground will be precedent setting for other nations maybe, but it will not have a, a reflex effect on other uh, files like, like education or anything. All right, so here you are, um, your government says, yep, we're going to do this by 2020, it's five years away, a reduction of 25%. Where are we in 2015 in terms of them hitting those targets? Getting anywhere close? Well, they're aiming for, they were aiming for 16%. Uh, so now they have to aim for 25. Uh, it has also been established that uh, that is uh, feasible uh, in the next five years. Uh, so th there's, that's not the point. And we also have to take into account that our neighboring countries like Denmark and Germany, for instance, they are targeting for, for 40% in 2020. And they're well on the way of achieving this. So, uh, so a lot of uh, uh, a lot of reductions can be made in a quite a relative short time. Uh, so there's no uh, hindrance there for the government to, to tackle this. Mm. All right, let's take it outside um, of the Netherlands, because as you say, the the government is like, hold on, we don't want precedents in other realms that we have jurisdiction over. But as you also say, there are other jurisdictions looking in to your country and saying, wow, they did that here. Could we do it do where we live? Um, is this, do you think, a viable thing that other citizens and other nations could copy, borrow from? I think, uh, I think uh, so, yes, because uh, basically uh, uh, it's all based on climate science from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate, ch climate Change, the UN body that researches all uh, climate science. So that's the same in every country, basically. Uh, and then the, the primarily, primarily we've based it on the legal grounds of the duty of care and the criteria for defining what a duty of care means in a given situation. These criteria are more or less the same in our country as they are in yours mm. or in any, any other developed uh, nation. So that could be uh, a starting point. I, wa I want to ask you how yeah. familiar you are with the Canadian context, because as I'm sure you know, um, climate change, like in most countries, is highly partisan, highly political, largely debated in terms of what to do. Can targets be met? Um, yeah. Our government has come under fire in the past number of years uh, for, for not wanting to deal with those targets. Could you see something like this unfolding in the Canadian context? Um, I could, because um, uh, mainly also because it's so, such a political debate. Well, I, I, I would argue that uh, climate science is not a political issue. It's, it's a very, uh, this, uh, the science is, is out there. It's very clear. Co the court in uh, the Netherlands had no uh, problem whatsoever in accept uh, accepting this science, as did uh, uh, the Dutch state. So in our view, you can't deny as a state the, the findings of the IPCC, so that would be a good starting point. Uh, and then also, I think uh, going to court may uh, 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 depoliticize in a way the whole issue, which I think is necessary to make uh, advancements in, uh, in, in, in addressing the issue. And then looking at what, uh, what Canada is aiming for, I have to say I, I read the numbers uh, last week for the first time, and I must say that I was really shocked because 
um, you will be reducing uh, uh, relative to levels in 2005. But if you recalculate those levels to, uh, the, uh, in relation to levels of 1990, then your country will, will be 26% above 1990 levels in 2020, whilst our government is ordered to be 25% below levels mm. uh, uh, in 2020 below levels. And as so. you take account of, of what our targets are and, and versus what yours are, what do, you, what do you read into that? I mean, is this a cultural difference? Where do you see this sort of parsing that here's, it's not just the Netherlands, it's Denmark's many of the Scandinavian countries that have much bigger targets than, than North American governments. Where do, where do you sort of balance that? Uh, it seems that there is uh, not enough counterbalance in the media with regard to, uh, to discussing the whole climate issue. I think that maybe we as a uh, nation might be a little bit w more aware of what the urgency of this matter is. And then maybe also the fact that you're high in, uh, in uh, fossil fuel production might, be, uh, might have something to do uh, with it. So there might be a lot of uh, lobbyists from uh, lobby from the the fossil fuel industry in this country. I guess that would certainly be the case. But then again, our country is also a gas producing country, and we have big fossil fuel lobbies. Also, uh, one of our nation's prides, if you wish, uh, is the uh, Shell uh, company, uh, one of the largest oil companies in the world. Um, so uh, I don't know, but something has to be done. Mm. I, I don't think that Canadian uh, politics gets this solved in time. Uh, and it would be good if we can create some pressure from outside of the government, from civil society, but also from our courts to press governments into more climate action. We have action. another um, international climate change summit coming up in the next uh, few months. Um, for citizens who are going to look to what you led in the Netherlands, 900 Dutch citizens coming together, an NGO, a lawyer, and essentially one, what advice would you give them? Uh, I would uh, advise each and every country, at least the groups that you were referring to, lawyers and NGOs and citizens, to, uh, to A, be, become more politically involved, if you will. Uh, this is, will always be uh, uh, very necessary uh, uh, for any country. But at the same time, uh, uh, join hands and see if, if cases like this or other uh, interventions uh, from the judiciary are, are possible. And I would uh, advise them to put some effort into this and, and see if you can press your government into uh, to more adequate climate action. Roger Cox, nice meeting you, nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.